In The Road Not Taken, poet Robert Frost writes that taking the path less traveled makes all the difference. That has certainly been the case for Texas Tech faculty members John Poach and Jared Foster. Poach started college intending to study nuclear engineering and instead found a passion for writing poetry. Foster, an accomplished nature photographer, takes the less traveled path quite literally, both in his work for clients like Texas Parks and Wildlife and in the adventure media classes he teaches. This is Communicators in a Cart. Hey, John. Hey there. How are you? I'm well, how are you doing? Good, man. Good. Ready for the semester? I'm ready because I'm on sabbatical You're this out semester. Of town for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You got time to talk about it? I do. I can buy coffee, tea, or whatever suits you. I'll have a coffee. All right, let's go. All right. You want to pull your door to? Sure. Almost 20 years, right? Almost 20 years. I started in uh, the fall of 2001. So I didn't know. I didn't know you grew up in Georgia. I knew you were from Erie, right? Yeah, I was born in Erie. Grew up in Georgia. But you know, I've lived in Texas longer than I've lived anywhere else in my life. So, so you said that po poetry is about experiences. A lot of people will write about experiences. Is there any poetry, or is there any aspect of it where someone just thinks, you know what, I want to. I'd like to explore this topic or this area, or is it something that just comes natural? Is it a natural expression? It's a combination of the two things. I mean, I think I've been writing a lot about Spain over the past, say, five, ten years as well, um, because I've been going to Spain through the TTU Study Abroad Center that we have there, the center in Seville. I'm looking at Italy, and so I'm doing reading about Italy. I'm gonna do some extra travel to Italy. Okay. I think I'll probably end up writing a book of poems that have to do with Italy. I, I don't know what those things are. Uh, but that's based but on I, your experiences, though. It's based on what you've sure. gone out and explored. Yeah. How's it going? Ari, right. I need a model. Here yeah. he is. That's all right. I, I'm actually just pitching a model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shift to you know, right? Yeah, good, good. Good. You want to join us? I've, you got time? Yeah. If you got a place for another model. We, yeah, look we, at his yeah, jacket. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to look, yeah. look terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, man, I'm glad we ran into you. Yeah. This yeah. is uh, this, this was Tutus. luck because we're yeah. we we've been uh, on our way over here talking about John's work and and especially. Uh, Texas is between two rivers. Yeah, yeah. And so you did the photography. I did for that. And how did that collaboration come about? Who was? Did you did you see images and say, Jared, let's do this, or did you say, you know what, I've got an idea? How did that How did that come about? Well, I think we we we've just known each other for a long time, and we we knew each other in different capacities, but all in one place, and that was down at the Texas Tech campus in Junction, Texas, where. I think John first met me, I was probably a student uh, of Wyman Menzers, and he was teaching the photography class down there, or I was at least helping him out. I, I, I TA'd with Wyman for several years, and uh, got to know John through that campus, through the work we do down there. And then I started teaching the class uh, after Wyman had stepped out uh, from, away from Texas Tech, and we just kind of kept in touch. We knew each other's work, and, and John, I had uh, John had the vision uh, for right. the book, and I think he'd had the vision for the book for for a while, and and knew that uh, you know I I was kind of all over the state photographing different places, particularly from a conservation uh, and, and an environment uh, out, outdoor stewardship kind of perspective, right. and so uh, I, I, you know, he, he trusted me to to kind of complete the vision, if if you will. Uh, so you th had you thought about working with Jared on this for a while, or did it just you know, I know this guy, and I've got this book of poetry I want to do. Well, we had talked earlier about how I like to collaborate with other artists, and I knew I wanted to collaborate with Jared, and eventually it came time to say, well, what do we have in common? Well, we had Junction in common. Of course, the South Atlanta River runs right through there, and so I've spent a lot of time on rivers, you know, up here, in Lubbock, there are no, there's no moving water, right. which frustrates me, <laughs> uh, not being from this place. And so, 
uh, I started thinking about that. I had been writing a lot of river poems. And I thought, wow, you know, we could definitely do an entire book on rivers. And of course, and then, and then it wasn't just going to be about Texas rivers. It was going to be about New Mexico rivers as well, where I've spent a lot of time up in Taos, and there's just a lot of there's the Rio Grande, but then there's all the feeder rivers there, and so. I got him up there. He got me down south of I-10 on some of these waters I didn't even know existed, and we had some work that we already that already existed, and then we created some new work. And there was a kind of back and forth, and so it was pretty inspirational. Well, what, it done. what came first, the the photography or the poetry? Both, I think. I mean, in, in, to dovetail on what John was saying. I mean, he got me up to New Mexico because I had not seen much of northern New Mexico's rivers that he had seen, particularly around the Taos, the Valle Vidal area, um, and so, and 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 so I, I had I had poetry that I could work off of, uh, but uh, you know no no sense of, of the place, and so in some ways it was like what I, I normally do with editorial work. I I would read a piece or I'd learn about the piece. It helped me research what was going on up there or I could travel with the writer in certain circumstances and, and go photograph it uh, using his experiences or the experience, my own experiences and uh, to create the pieces. And then vice versa for him, uh, you know, I'd, I'd spent a lot of time photographing Texas and, and especially around Texas waterways and there were some places that John hadn't seen yet, particularly places that are uh, kind of governed by the Nature Conservancy and so um, since they were one of my clients I was able to get us some access to some of those places and, and uh, you know from there the poetry uh, bloomed. And, and I might add that and, and I know you'll be humble on this because you're a humble guy but one of the best <laughs> photographers in the state especially uh, yeah. shooting the landscape oh, of Texas there's no question um, and several state publications mm -hmm. seem to be always published but this was a new territory for you to have your photo photography alongside uh, poetry? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, th so this, I, I'd written several books, but they were mostly yeah. educational in, in some sort of the, the word. And uh, But this is the first coffee table book that I'd ever produced, or at least collaborated on. I'd, I'd done a, a couple as gifts for, for family members just uh, through a, you know, these, these publishers that right. I guess the self-publishing <laughs> organizations out there. But this was the first coffee table book, and, and, and what a great collaboration because my, right. my mentor, Wyman Menzer, uh, did this often with his collaborators, and I thought it was just kind of a neat way to kind of step into my mentor's shoes in some way, uh, form another. Wait, John, what's been the reception of the Twin Two Rivers? I think people are excited about it. Uh, it's Texas Tech Press yeah. did a fantastic job. Um, we looked around at other presses, but ultimately we decided, wouldn't it be great to just have it here at home and to have the oversight and have this kind of just, you know, creative control just right here at our fingertips. And it was pretty seamless, uh, us working with them to get it done. How does, uh, how do you use this, these works in your classes? Because you, you teach in the College of Media Communication, obviously in the Department of English. Are you able to take these experiences and these, this published work and use it in your classroom, or do you keep it separate? I don't make my students ever buy any of my books. Uh, that's what you're it's asking. It's not required. To uh, no. Not, um, not, not sometimes actually, anthologies, but, yeah, but not, my, not my own work. Uh, but I definitely have them do what I do. Uh, I've organized a number of different collaborations within my classes. Uh, that I teach of saying, hey, I'm doing this work with a filmmaker, now you're going to work with a filmmaker and make your own you know, poetry film or video poem. Uh, and alongside photographers as well, I've done that in the classroom and I'm going to continue to do that because I think it's really good for poets to think about their art in respect, to get some kind of objectivity in relation to another art and that process and say, wow, there are some things in common, but here's what poetry does differently. And they just learn so much from that. What do you find that you do your best writing? And then what do you like shooting? Is it just anything, just to be able to go out and shoot and, and to write? Is there a place? Is there a certain time of day? How do you, when, when does the inspiration strike? I just have to sit my butt down at my desk and just be in <laughs> solitude and not have much of el much else going on. I don't, 
go out into nature on a mountaintop and write out my poems Get romantically. Get in a yoga, sit in a yoga no, pose and, and start. doesn't happen yeah. that way for me. Okay. And, you know, I, and I know I Jared, <laughs> he goes out there and does that stuff, but, yeah. you know, he sits there and works on his computer in front of, you know, oh, yeah, to make yeah, those yeah, images yeah. do exact, do the best thing that they can do. Right. Well, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of research beforehand on, on my end of things, on where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's it's appropriate for me to paint a picture that I am maybe sometimes on that mountaintop photographing uh, different landscapes, beautiful things about our state and, and region. But uh, you know, a lot of it comes after a fair amount of looking at, at a map and also a lot of driving, a lot of driving or riding a bicycle or whatever it may be. Um, and but you know, sometimes that is that. And, and I think, like any photographer, I like to work. Uh, when the light inspires me, and so usually that's early morning, late evenings, that kind of thing. Did, did you shoot specifically uh, some, or mo all images for this book, or did you have some previous images that were Yeah, so I, I, I think the oldest image in the book is probably 12 or 13 years old. So probably about 50% of the book is, is what we just call stock photography, but it's work that I'd created either for other publications or in the hopes that it would find publication elsewhere. Um, and then another half is created for the book, which I think for, for a coffee table book like this, where uh, th this collaboration is of two pretty distinct disciplines, um, is actually a fair amount of original work going into the, the piece. John, when did you start working on this? In relation to what Jared was saying, I'd say about half my work kind of existed prior to this and then half was created for the book. Some poems probably from about 10 years ago and then a big chunk of it just the past four or five years. Awesome guys. I appreciate you taking the time. This is fantastic. I look forward to exploring more of it, reading more of your poetry. Always see your pictures everywhere. So. Well, I appreciate you communicating yeah. with us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Yeah.